As Aldrich's family dropped her off at the care facility, it felt like they had abandoned her. She'd been here for two years and none of them want to see her anymore. They hardly called her anymore. There was only one person who helped her through it all, her grandson Thomas. Thomas was such a sweet kid in her eyes, when everyone turned their backs on her, he was still there. He'd come to visit her every weekend and would call her whenever he had a chance. Hearing from him always made Mildred stay. Unfortunately, he wasn't the saint she thought he was. Mildred suffered from a bad case of dementia and over the last few years it had gotten a whole lot worse. It was the reason her family had given up on her, or so she thought. Sadly, the truth would lead to a lot of heartaches and the urge to get revenge. When Thomas came to visit Mildred, he often told her that the family saw her as a burden and that they wanted nothing to do with her. It hurt her really deep, especially after she heard the bitterness in their voices when she called. It seemed like Thomas was the only one who still cared about her. Thomas also told his grandma that the family wasn't happy about his visits. They were so unhappy about it that they stopped inviting him to family get-togethers. It seemed like he was being treated just as badly as her. But that couldn't be further from the truth. It was just another part of his elaborate web of lies. Because of what Thomas told her, Mildred started resenting her family. She felt terrible about him being treated like a stranger because he was there for her. To her, it sounded like he was sacrificing so much of his life to make her happy, and that didn't sit well with her at all. On one visit, Thomas even told her that the family had decided to put her in the care home because they expected her to pass away soon. That statement really made her sad. She knew that she probably only had a few years left, but hearing that her children spoke about her in such a way was like a punch to the gut. Mildred suggested that Thomas follow in the footsteps of the rest of the family, but her grandson would stand for it. Instead of abandoning her, as they did, he increased the number of visits and phone calls. It was especially clear after her condition started worsening. That was when Mildred started noticing certain things. Every now and then, Thomas would mention that he was having money problems. He claimed that he had lost his job and that he was having difficulty paying his mortgage. That made Mildred feel even worse. She thought it was partly her fault and she felt the need to do something about it to help her devoted grandson. Mildred took a few days to consider her options. She wasn't rich, but when everything she had was put together, it would come up to a decent amount. She decided it would only be fair for her to give her entire inheritance to Thomas. Her sons didn't deserve it anyway. Where were they for all these years? Thomas was there for her all along. Mildred felt her family had to be punished for leaving her to die. They even tried to go as far as to try and stop her grandson from visiting her. He was the last person she had left. But what Mildred didn't see was that she was being misled by the only person she trusted. Thomas wasn't so innocent after all, and her sons were only doing what they thought was right. Even though Mildred was old and was suffering from the effects of her condition, some things still bothered her. Deep down, she knew her sons weren't cruel. Mildred couldn't help but wonder if what Thomas said was true or not. She thought she might have gotten things wrong because of her dementia. Maybe her sons did come, but she just forgot about it. Mildred had originally planned to split her inheritance between her sons. It would be up to them to share it with their families and decide how much went to each of their children. But after what they put her through, they didn't deserve it. She had made up her mind. She gave everything to her grandson as he deserved it more than anyone else. However, there was a slight issue. With a will that had been standing for so long, it was so easy to alter the information. When Mildred created her will, things worked differently than they do now. There were different rules and stipulations attached to it, and that would create one major issue that Mildred wanted to avoid. What problem was she trying to avoid? Her sons would be informed of her planned changes, but that wasn't even the worst part. They also had the right to object them since they were the only people in line that would receive anything. But Mildred hoped that they would understand instead of going against her. Mildred was determined to go through it though, so she got on the phone and discussed everything with her lawyer. Luckily, he was all too happy to deal with everything. Mildred dreaded what her sons would think of her after they found out, but she would deal with it when it came to that. At least then, she would be able to speak her mind. But the next day, the paperwork was ready and the lawyer informed Mildred's sons, Mike and Dave, of the changes. Mildred was anxious and she waited for her sons to call. She'd expected to hear from them, but she never expected what they would say. She never expected them to ask for a visit, but she was happy to agree for it. Early the next morning, Mildred got a call from Thomas. 
and he seemed upset. He found out that his father and his uncle would pay her a visit, and he was determined to convince her not to see them. Margaret thought it would be the last time she saw her sons, and she wasn't going to let the opportunity slip. Within an hour, Thomas was knocking on her door. Thomas was livid and he tried to talk Margaret out of seeing her sons, but she was adamant about hearing their side of the story, and that didn't sit too well with her grandson. He shouted, begged, pleaded, and argued, but when he saw that Margaret wasn't going to change her mind, his entire attitude changed. What a huff. Thomas stormed off, leaving his distraught grandmother on the brink of tears. She had no idea why he was acting the way he did, but she would find out soon enough. Margaret had an hour before her sons arrived, and she took that time to calm herself down. But she had no idea that her day of bad luck was just about to get a whole lot worse. An hour later, Mike and Dave knocked on the door, and for some unexplainable reason, they looked happy and relieved that their mother had allowed them to come in. That contradicted everything that Tom said to her over the last few months. Had her grandson been lying the entire time? When Margaret brought the subject up, her son shared a look, and she instantly saw that she was being misled. Dave informed her that they wanted nothing more than to visit her. But Thomas informed them that her condition was worsening, and she preferred it if they stayed away. He also told her that Thomas had lied about everything else. After Margaret heard everything her sons had to say, she was devastated for the past two years. She thought her children wanted nothing to do with her. She spent her time wondering what she had done to deserve this, but now she knew it was all her fault. If she didn't believe Thomas, she could have been with her sons. Because of that, their reunion was bittersweet. Margaret was happy that she got to see her beloved children one last time, but she was also furious about Thomas's deception. The truth was that Margaret was out for revenge. Now that she knew that what Thomas wanted, she would make sure he wouldn't get it. But how would she do it? Before Mike and Dave left, Mild would ask them one last favor. She wanted them to act as if Thomas had gotten his way, and she needed them to stay quiet about what she had discussed. It was an integral part of her plan. She needed Thomas to keep thinking he had one until she could get her lawyer to sort the matter out. Her sons were happy to make her final wish a reality, even though they didn't know what she was planning. They were just happy to have it resolved the earliest. And they were delighted with the fact that they could spend some much-needed time with their mother during her final days. But what was Margaret up to, and how would Thomas find out about his fate? After her sons left, Margaret set out to arrange the final pieces of her life's journey. She wrote a letter to each one of her children and grandchildren. She wanted to thank them for the parts they had played in her life. But the letter to Thomas was going to be a little different. What she had to say to him would destroy everything he thought he had built. A couple of days later, Dave and Mike got a call from the nursing home. Margaret had passed on the night before, and she wanted them to be the first to know. As expected, Thomas told everyone that Margaret asked them to arrange the funeral, and his father and uncle were all too happy to let him do it. On the day of the funeral, Thomas was front and center. He wanted all the attention to be on him while he anxiously awaited the call from the lawyer, but the call never came. Instead, the lawyer and a few people from the company Thomas had never heard about arrived at the funeral. He set up a monitor, and suddenly Thomas's lies came crashing down around him. For the longest time, I thought you guys wanted nothing to do with me. Mildred's voice echoed through the crowd before her face appeared on the big screen, but now I know it was just a lie fabricated by Thomas. Gasps echoed through the crowd. Mildred had gone the extra mile to expose her grandson in front of the entire family and he would suffer their wrath. In order to protect the privacy of those depicted, some names, locations, and identifying characters have been changed and are product of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to the actual events or places or persons, living or dead, are entirely coincidental.